Welcome to This Day in Baseball's Daily Rewind, where we bring you events and stories that are eternal memories for baseball fans' soul. We bring you one event from each day in the calendar and go well beyond the box score. Our stories are brief and fun and come with some surprises. My name's Tom Hannon, and I have had a never-ending curiosity about baseball for 40 years, and it's my pleasure to bring these stories to you. Welcome, baseball fans, to today's episode. Today is our 12th episode, 12 episodes already. It's been so exciting for me to talk to you about Dennis Eckersley, Reggie Jackson, Ebbets Field, Hank Aaron, and all the others already. I hope you're enjoying these stories. Today's episode 12 is called The Eagle Soars, and it's the Tris Speaker Trade. I love the story about this deal. It's about money. It's about a future Hall of Famer who felt he was being disrespected by the Boston Red Sox and about him not, not wanting to play for the Cleveland Indians. He, of course, eventually did come to Cleveland and somewhat stuck into the Red Sox in the process. But before I jump in, I want to quickly remind you about our YouTube channel, This Day in Baseball. We have over 300 videos on our channel and adding new ones all the time. We just added full-length radio broadcasts from 1934 through 1936. They include World Series, All-Star Games, and they are a true treat for a fan. Just pop in your earbuds, go for a walk, and listen to an old-fashioned game with some of the greatest players who ever played. And that's on our YouTube channel, This Day in Baseball. On April 12, 1916, the Cleveland Indians acquire future Hall of Famer Tris Speaker from the Boston Red Sox for pitcher Sad Sam Jones, minor league infielder Fred Thomas, and a record $55,000 in cash. The Red Sox had just won their third World Series in the first 12 years it existed. Speaker had played in two of them. He was already an MVP and one of baseball's greatest players. Joe Lannon, the team owner, had bought the team in 1914, and even after the World Series victory in 1915, he claimed to hardly make a profit. Lannon decided that Speaker was overpaid, and he was going to be one of the targets to reduce payroll. Speaker had declined a bit to hit 322. However, he still produced a war over seven, which is wins above replacement, and he was still the team's best player in entering into his prime. He was just 27 years old. Unlike today's game, where Mike Trout signs a 10-year contract and every penny of it's guaranteed, players in 1916 mostly played year to year and they were under full team control during that time. Lannon spent much of the offseason complaining publicly about his big payroll. Although he acknowledged that he cleared enough money to make a small profit, enough to cover this year's expenses and last year's deficit. And what Lannon was about to do next was nothing but shocking. See, in those days, contracts were mailed to players. And Speaker had been thinking about asking for a raise of $1,000. At the time, he was making $14,000 a year, and he wanted to up that to $15,000 a year. Now the Red Sox had agreed to pay him the $14,000 because they didn't want him to jump to the Federal League as, as, as several players had. But at this time, the Federal League had already gone out of business. So Speaker's request seemed fairly reasonable. He was one of baseball's best players. Lannon, however, offered just $9,000 to the Gray Eagle, which would be a $5,000 pay cut. Nearly 40%, I mean, that would be like Mike Trout taking a 40% reduction in payroll. It's just an unbelievable thought. Speaker was shocked, and he refused to sign the contract. He considered not showing up at all for spring training. However, Red Sox manager Bill Kerrigan had an impromptu meeting with Trish Speaker. And while they were soaking in hot tubs, back then called mineral water baths, Kerrigan convinced Speaker to come to spring training on a barnstorming trip, and he told him he would be paid by the game. Unbeknownst to Speaker, all along, Landon was telling people he was not going to pay him the $15,000 and that he would trade him first. Well, welcome to the power of the press. That was just in time for Tris Speaker. You see, Ed Bang was a sports writer for the old Cleveland News. 
and he had just read a wire story about Speaker's contract problems and how the Red Sox wanted to trade him. As I already mentioned, Speaker had no idea what Boston's plans were. Turns out, most other people didn't either. Remember, this was 1916, not 2019, when information touches a billion people in a heartbeat. Bang then notified GM Bob McCroy, quote, Bob, I think we can get Speaker, and I think we ought to grab him. I know Lannon, and I know he will sell any player for enough money, and he's mad at Speaker right now. I suggest you get a hold of Jim Doon and have him call Lannon. Doon had just become the new owner of the Indians. McRoy relayed the message to his boss, and Doon called Lannon. Lannon, meanwhile, was telling other players, like Smokey Joe Wood, he would work things out with Speaker, and he was getting them to sign their new contracts. And then on April 12th, the day of the trade, Speaker actually hit a game-winning home run off star pitcher Rube Marquez. After the game, Lannon approached Speaker and said, That was great, Tris, and I'll tell you this now. Your terms are okay. We'll sign when we get to Boston tomorrow. But that night, Speaker received a call at his hotel room. It was McRoy, the tribe's general manager. He was in the lobby and wanted to talk to Speaker. Speaker really wasn't sure why McRoy wanted to meet with him, but he went down to meet with him anyway. McRoy said, Tris, how'd you like to come to Cleveland? Speaker was stunned. I think you've got a bad ball club. Cleveland isn't a good baseball town either. Boston is great, and it looks like we might win another pennant. I don't want to go to Cleveland. The Indians were 57-95 and 95 in 1915, and of course the Red Sox were coming off a World Series. But McRoy said, well, we've made a deal for you. We bought you. Speaker said, but Lannon told me this afternoon we'd get together in Boston tomorrow and work out all the remaining details. But it was too late. The deal was done, and then Speaker threatened to retire. He was outraged. It wasn't over, though, not even close. Cleveland had no problem paying Speaker the 15000 he wanted, but then Speaker demanded a $10,000 bonus in addition to his salary. And again, the Indians had no problem, and they agreed to pay him, but he wanted to get it from Lannon. And that turned into be a war between Speaker, Lannon, and Cleveland to finalize the deal. It became a messy situation very quickly. But then AL Commissioner Ban Johnson stepped in and he actually made Lannon pay Speaker the $10,000 bonus. So he ended up only getting $45,000 for a star, which at the time was a record. And it really turns out Lannon could have used some advanced metrics back then. You see, Speaker was only 27 at the time, just coming into his prime, and he ended up being a huge star with the tribe. In fact, in 1916, the year, the year of the trade, he hits 386. He leads the league in batting average, on-base percentage, slugging percentage, OPS. He had an unbelievable season. But it didn't stop there. In his 11 years in Cleveland, he hits 354, plays an unbelievable center field. He was so good in the outfield, reporters used to say, that's where triples went to die. Speaker is in the top five in virtually every single category. If he doesn't lead it, he's in the top two or three right behind it. He was actually their manager when they, player manager in 1920, when they won their very first World Series. Speaker would be inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1939. Now for Lannon, he sold the Red Sox after the 1916 season. But before he did, he did do something historic by bringing Babe Ruth to Boston. Lannon ended up passing away in 1928 in Brooklyn, New York. He had a strange death. He fell from the ninth floor window of a hotel he owned called the Hotel Granada. The New York Times worded this coverage very carefully. The window through which he fell is a French one. It was only 15 inches wide. There was a heat register in front of it, the medical examiner said. It was difficult to see how a man of his size, of Mr. Lannon, could have gone through the window without turning sideways and squeezing the body through. He either fell or jumped, it quoted the examiner as saying. Hmm, maybe Lannon made a few enemies along the way. At the time of his death, he was worth $8 million. And when you really think of it, think of it and, you squab and if he was worth $8 million, you squabble him with a player like Tris Speaker for $6,000, it seems like the $6,000 would have been money well spent. 
for a player like Speaker who put up the career that he did. Well, that is the story of the Tris Speaker's trade on April 12th, 1916. I hope you enjoyed it. And just remember to check us out on thisdayinbaseball.com where we have thousands of stories just like this one. And we will see you at the ballpark.